In this video, we are going to continue working on dependency extraction. And this time, we are going to look at moving data from export variables into CSV tables. Format best suitable for manual data editing, but quite bad for processing in terms of code per feature. If you missed the first part, where I explained in details a practical reason for replacing export variables with centralized data storage and showed a solution based on JSON, I'd recommend to pause here and go watch that video. A brief explanation of the problem we are working on is that values of export variables are stored inside of scenes where they are defined, making it difficult to change your game logic and class structure because any changes that affect this variable lead to manually opening every scene and changing values, which is error prone to say the least. To solve it, we are moving values into one centralized storage, from which it gets extracted on RAID. In the previous video, we were talking about pros and cons of JSON as a format for our database. Now, let's discuss pros and cons of CSV and what it's suitable for. Pros First of all, table is the most natural form for representing such data, and, as such, it is easier for a person to work with data represented as table rather than a long list. CSV files are editable both through plain text editors and tools like Excel, which adds to convenience of working with it manually. In terms of automatic processing of it, tools for it are not as widespread as those for JSON, but, for example, Python provides such tools in standard library, so it wouldn't be a big problem. Cons Coming straight from the last point, support of CSVs in Godot is quite limited and thus it will take more code to produce the same result as we received with one line for JSON. There is no data typing in CSV. Values of cells are treated as a plain text. If you want to have types like int or boolean, which we actually want, you have to write code for it. One more thing is that, technically, values with commas are forbidden inside of fields, because CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, which clearly implies that commas are reserved for separating cells, which, in combination with the previous point, means that this is not one string, but two separate fields. Luckily, Godot has a function which allows for passing such strings as one value. But it's not like some sort of standard, it's just a convenience that Godot devs created for us. So, if you decide to automatically process it using other languages and tools, there is no guarantee that these rules would apply. And the last one. Even with these rules for strings, CSV isn't the best for storing arrays and dictionaries in its fields. Making it work is again up to us. I think that you've already figured that this video will be packed tight with code for parsing almost plain text files into sensible data. So, let's get into it without wasting much more time. Baseline for it is the same as in previous video. We are removing export variables, adding a new one for a key describing a specific subclass, then global variable script, which stores a model for our hierarchy, and loads it from hard drive. First of all, let's separate file loading and JSON into separate functions, add constant which stores path to our JSON or CSV file. Now we can create a new function for loading CSV, reusing file loading part, and now we are going to call this function from underscore ready method. But before we start working on this new function, this one thing that I missed in the first video. I didn't know that in some cases global variable script might call its underscore ready method later than ordinary scripts inside of a scene. And since we are loading data from hard drive in this function, it might be the case for some of your objects that they are trying to extract data from model before it's initialized. To address this problem, we are going to add a setGet keyword to our model, omit setter and define our custom getter. We want to call updateModel function from it if model is null, otherwise we are just going to return model. With this piece of code, we are now safe from loading other issues. The last thing to do is, well, do everything CSV related. We are going to base our process around the goal of producing the same result as with JSON version, so that it can be interchangeable without rewriting any code. To do so, we have to be able to support types such as boolean, number, string, and also arrays and dictionaries. And the first four of them are easy. We will treat objects as boolean if it's equal to true or false string. Same with null. If none of this is true, we are going to check if it's a zero string literal, or if casting string to float returns non zero result. In both cases, we treat value as number. In any other cases, we assume that this value is a string. To deal with arrays and dictionaries, we are going to use a bit of a hacky approach. 
we can store CSV inside of another CSV. But what we can do is we can store JSON inside of it. With this idea in mind, we're going to check if string is enclosed in square or curly brackets. If so, let's just treat it as a JSON and pass as such. That way we are able to store all the possible JSON data types inside of our CSV files and pass it out. Now let's define rules for our file structure. We want a first row to store field names, first column to store object case, and we will treat a string consisting of one white space as empty field, since Godot ignores empty fields and we might want to use them sometimes. So in code we are going to start by reading first row and collecting all of the fields into array. First field doesn't store any important information, but collecting it will make for easier iterating through columns later. Next our job is to read the rest of the file line by line until we reach the end of it. For each line we are going to create a dictionary out of values of all of the fields, but skipping index 0, using elements of previously created array with the same index as keys. But only if this value is not a white space. Then we are going to put this newly created object into our model using value of index 0 as a key. And that's actually it. Now you can replace JSON model function for this one and it's going to work without any additional changes. The only downside of using this CSV parser is that you can store some values as strings in this file, like true, null or anything encased in square or curly brackets. But I think it's not a big deal, and if you want to use such strings, you can remove some of the code to disable conversions. After that, the whole process is identical to the one in previous video. Go to your base class and in its underscore ID function extract all of the fields you need from the model, using previously defined key. Repeat this process for any class in your hierarchy which defines new fields. And don't forget to always call method of base class with dot underscore ready. To summarize the result of this video, I want to say that with CSVs there is no one size fits all. The format is very broad and general, so it's very much possible that for your specific case some other passing function would work better. And that's okay in my opinion. In the end, we are working on games and not on some sort of passing programs. And tweaking things here and there is a good thing, which leads to better results. Anyway, this is for today. I don't think it's necessary to comment a C-sharp implementation of this same thing. There aren't much differences between two versions. All the code presented in this video and also a C-sharp version of it is available on GitHub. As always, you can find link to it in the description, same as with some other helpful links and my socials where I post a bit more about the projects I'm working on. Between this video and the last one, I made my research into ways of combining centralized data storage with convenience of editing your data from Godot Engine UI provided by export variables, and I'm happy to say that it's possible using tool scripts. In the next video, we are going to take a look at my solution and some important details about the solution and the specifics of the editor. I hope that this video was helpful for you and really want to know your opinion on it, so leave comments down below, consider subscribing and ring the bell to not miss the next part. But for now, thanks for watching, see you next time. Stay safe, have a good day and bye.